Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today I have some more romance books with disability representation in them. If this is your first time watching one of my videos, specifically a disabled romance recommendation video, you might not know that there are more videos. I'm gonna link them all down below. I think this is like the fourth or fifth one that I've made. Um, so if you want more recs, those are all down below for you. And then I also have a disability and chronic illness myself. So I will link down below my story time with that as well as my chronic illness YouTube channel is always linked towards the bottom of my description. I think it's called like gluten-free slash chronic illness YouTube channel. So I document a lot of the stuff that I've been going through with my disability and chronic illness down there. So if you are interested in following that, that is down below for you. But I just want to get started. Um, I have about 10 recommendations. Um, one is actually like a whole series. So we're going to get into this. Now, I do not have any of the disabilities talked about in this video. I personally do not have any of them. So if you do have one of these disabilities and think like it is not represented well in the book, please feel free to message me on Instagram to let me know because I do not want to promote a book with poor representation. That is not what I want to do at all. So please contact me and let me know if this book on this list is appropriate to read or not. Anyways, without further ado, let's get into this video and these recommendations. The first book that I want to recommend is Falling from the Sky by Serena Bowen. This is actually the second book in a series, but you can read it totally on its own. Like the couple from the first book pops up maybe in the first chapter and then that's it. Um, so if you want to know who these characters are, feel free to read book one. I was not that big of a fan of book one, but I really, really, really liked book two. So this is the romance between Hank Hazardous, that's his nickname, in this snowboarding world, and Callie. So Hank was on his way to Olympic stardom when he got in an accident that left him with the inability to move his legs. So I believe he is now a paraplegic. And Callie is one of the doctors that has been tasked to be on Hank's team, specifically his physical therapist. And so this is quite forbidden because she is technically his doctor. That's a big no-no in the medical world for sure. I was honestly, I feel like really surprised that I liked this one because I disliked book one so much. So maybe that raised my rating a little bit is because I didn't expect much out of it, but I really enjoyed this. And I loved the discussion of disability and accessibility and physical therapy as somebody who has been in physical therapy for a while because of my disability. Um, I really loved the discussion of that and how you could tell Serena Bowen really did her research. I just overall loved how these two fell in love with each other and um, how Hank truly became the man he was always supposed to be because before this accident, he wasn't really the best person. Like he wasn't the nicest, the kindest, the most understanding. And through him going through all of this, he realizes what his wrongdoings were before everything happened. And this experience overall has made him a better and stronger person, which I loved reading about. I next have The Marquess and I by Stacey Reed. This is obviously a historical romance. This is also on Kindle Unlimited if you wanna check it out. This is the second chance romance between Lady Willow and Alistar. I wanna say I was in their teenage years, but the two of them were really into each other, wanted to marry and be together for the rest of their life. However, Willow's father hears wind of this and he really wants Willow to marry a man who has a title. Alistar does not have a title. And so he basically threatens her that he will ruin this man if he keeps pursuing her. And so she has to pretend to basically be inferior to him, break his heart in order to make him leave because that's the only way he will leave is for him to believe that Willow doesn't love him anymore. And so she makes up all these lies and tells him to leave her. And it is years later, Alistar is actually a lord now or close to it. He has a title essentially. Um, because he was like at the lower end of the totem pole when it came to being a titled person, but all of the people in front of him ended up dying from scarlet fever. And so all of his loved ones are dead and he's he now has this title that he didn't want in the first place. And so he now needs to find a wife in order to create an heir to further on the line. And so one day he goes to a ball to find a wife and there he sees Willow. And he really wants to kind of like be rude to her and kind of make her feel the same way she made him feel all those years ago. But then he finds out that in the years that they've been apart, she's now visually impaired because of an accident that she's been through. And he is shocked. 
He's like, why did I not know about this? Why didn't she come to me? Like, I feel like this would be something that she would lean on me for. And she did not reach out to me whatsoever. Am I really that horrible of a person to her? And so you have to read the book to figure out why she never told him and, and the whole reason as to her accident. So this is a second chance romance between Willow and Alistar. And then this is really also about Willow fighting for her independence because she's been blind for a couple of years now. And she's only really able to navigate their home her home by herself she's never left her home really in the past couple years and her family is really scared to let her go out into the world because accessibility was not really there for disabled people back then and so they're just trying to keep her safe when willow's trying to convince these people to let her live her life her disability is not going to control her or limit her to what she wants to do um so i loved loved that discussion also in a point in the book willow thinks that she is inferior and not that good of a wife couldn't be that good of a wife to Alistar because of what she's gone through and because of her disability and he's like jamming it into her brain that he does not give a crap what she's gone through has made her so strong of a woman she is going to be an amazing wife an amazing mother and just an amazing woman to have in his life and oh it was so beautiful. I really recommend this one. Next is A Night to Surrender by Tessa Dare, the first book in her Spindle Cove series. This is the romance between Victor Bramwell and Susanna. Susanna. So Susanna and her father are kind of like the creators of Spindle Cove. It's where kind of like spinsters and women go to vacation to get away from men in society. Um, but then like the king has tasked Victor Bramwell to create a militia in this town where there is the majority of women. So he's like stumped. He has to get all these not stereotypically like looking warrior men to make an army. <laughs> so you have like old men, young 15 year old men, like, like guys who you wouldn't assume to be warriors or soldiers to build this ragtag group of men you know and so Bramwell and Susanna kind of really butt heads in this book because he has a job to do but Susanna's trying to make the town very authentic in the spindle coveness of it and so this is kind of like an enemies to lovers situation in here they really butt heads in here the great the banter in here is great the disability rep in here is with Victor himself um he is a war veteran and his leg was injured so he walks with a limp now and I believe he also uses a cane two to get around um so i love the use of a mobility aid as somebody who uses a mobility aid i love that representation in books so this is great i feel like it's the great start to the series it's not my favorite in the series but i feel like it's a great starting point next i have getting schooled by christina c jones this is the romance between reese and jason reese is the ta teacher's assistant for her mother's college writing course and so she grades papers a lot reads the papers grades them and gives them back to her mother to finalize the grades and so she ends up really vibing with and almost like developing an attachment towards one of the students in the class because of his writing and it just so happens to be Jason but she's met Jason in real life and they don't get along so she's like really vibing with and falling for this guy's writing when in actuality she doesn't really like him as a person and so this is just a really funny great banter enemies to lovers romance and I really loved in here also you have kind of like an unconventional student because I believe Jason's 28 in college um as an undergrad and so I love that representation in there because you rarely see that in a college romance but and the disability rep in here is with Jason he is an amputee I believe from his knee down is amputated so he also wears a prosthetic leg so if you would like to read about an amputee pick up this one this one was really fun i have another amputee romance we have fire in his chaos by ruby dixon this is actually book number eight in the fireblood dragon series people ask me if i need to read these books in order for the fireblood dragons yes i want to say any ruby book that you read besides like her Resdiverse series you should read in order because it's kind of like an overarching plot specifically the fireblood dragon there is an overarching plot so please read these books in order so book number eight it takes a while to get there but i really recommend it so if you don't know about the fireblood dragon series it's an alien romance series that takes place on earth it's post-apocalyptic one day on earth a rift opened up in the sky and dragons started flying through decimating the entire world and there's a few camps of survivors here and there of humans um but dragons kind of like rule the skies rule the world at this point so rachel it lives in fort dallas so it's this fort of survivors and she is an amputee she got a lot of injuries from when the rift first opened up i believe something a house crumbled on her or something along those lines um to where she is heavily scarred on her body on her face 
and she is missing part of her arm now. And so this is her romance between the dragon shifter named Jurek. It's definitely one of my favorites in the series. I just love these two characters. Something I really loved about Rachel is like she takes her disability in stride. She sees nothing wrong with it whatsoever. She doesn't think she's less than because of it. And I love that. And it's such a breath of fresh air because I love disability rap and romance books. One of the things is because we all go through this cycle of self deprecating thoughts and everything. And I do love those books because I feel like it's great representation. I've seen and felt those things before, but it is also amazing to see a character who has a disability who is not bothered by it whatsoever. So I really loved that. Next I have Devil in Winter by Lisa Kleypas. This is book number three in the Wallflower series. This one and book two are probably my favorite. This is the romance between Evie and Sebastian. They are a fan favorite, a part of the Lisa Kleypas universe and I totally see why. So you've met Evie in the previous books. Um, this series is like four books all about four girlfriends who are wallflowers in London society for various reasons. Evie is a wallflower and like no man will approach her in that sense at balls, parties, in life in general because she has a stutter and is very shy around men or new people in general, it doesn't, that doesn't have to be men, but she has a very bad home life. Um, and so she is very wealthy, but her family is very controlling and they really want Evie to marry this one person so they can get her fortune. And she's like, I don't want that to happen. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna find a man who's titled who is in desperate need of a wife and a fortune so they will marry me. And so you read about Sebastian in book two. He's kind of like the villain in book two. And she comes up to him and is like, I know you really need money. Please marry me so I can escape this horrible man and you can get some money. So it's a win-win situation. So that's what they do. Evie in here has a stutter. So that's the disability representation in here. And I do love the whole discussion around Evie and everything. I really related to her in her demeanor and her personality and her her kind of like mama bareness to the people she loves. Like she's very protective of the people she loves. And I loved reading that about that with Evie in here. We have another character who has a stutter. This is Nerdgasm by Kimberly Reese. Our hero here, Theo, is the one with the stutter. He is a TA for our college class, another TA. And one of the students in here, her name's Addie, immediately sees Theo and is like, I want him. I'm going after him, I want him. So we have a innocent, wink, wink, innocent hero um, with a heroine who is more experienced than him and they kind of like take it slow, go at their own pace in the physical department at least and I, love that. Um, Theo, his stutter used to be uh, more severe when he was a child, but he's gone through speech therapy and all that stuff to kind of like control it a little bit more. But it really comes out when he's nervous, especially around women. So it comes out when Addie's trying to talk to him a lot and she thinks it is the cutest thing ever and doesn't think that it's a bad thing at all, even though Theo sometimes thinks it does. Uh, but I just love this couple. It's one of my favorite books from last year and I really recommend it. This one is on KU if you want to pick it up. Next, I have a whole series. So I only own three, um, but there are five books out. Um, so this is the Bergman Brothers series by Chloe Lees. Uh, first one is Only When It's Us. And this one is the romance between Willa and Ryder and they're in college together. And this is an enemies to lovers romance. Ryder in here is the one with the disability. He is deaf. And even in here, he gets... Uh, surgery he gets cochlear implants I'm pretty sure in this book um and I do want to forewarn that Chloe Lee's Chloe Lee's has actually made some edits to this book because people who are hard of hearing or and deaf have reached out to her telling her that some things were not represented well so she has made edits to it I don't know if I have the edited version um I haven't checked um but just be aware of that please because I feel like Chloe Lee's is a author that really listens and is really compassionate about that so Yes. And then book two is about Ren and Frankie, my favorite one in the series, tied with, kind of tied with book four. I don't know. Um, so Ren and Frankie, uh, Ren is on a hockey team and Frankie is kind of like the social media manager for the hockey team. Uh, Ren has been hardcore crushing on Frankie for years and this is a forced proximity romance. Frankie has to stay in Ren's house for a little bit because her house has been broken into, so she needs somewhere to stay. And um, this is just so cute. She is the grump and he is the sunshine. So it's grumpy sunshine, but the heroine is the grump. Loved it. Um, Frankie in here is the one with the disability. She has rheumatoid arthritis. That's a chronic illness. And she also has autism and she uses a cane to get around. I loved it. I loved that representation in here. Book three doesn't really have disability rep. It has more um, 
mental health representation. Um, that one is Aiden and Freya. Aiden and Freya, they're a married couple, marriage and trouble romance. Um, and he has pretty severe anxiety. I really related to him with that. Book four is With You Forever. I love this one too. This is between Axel and Rooney. The representation in here is Axel has autism and Rooney has IBS. I really related to Rooney too because she lives on a gluten-free diet to help with her IBS. I have to live on a gluten-free diet for my celiac disease. So I loved seeing that in a book. Honestly, it was so refreshing. And this is actually a marriage of convenience romance. I, I love this one, so I was thinking much. It's also like a grumpy sunshine too. I would say Axel's a grump, Rooney's a sunshine, so good. Um, and it has a lot of cute pets in here too. I know, I just keep hyping up that book. Um, <laughs> and then book five just came out, which is Everything For You. I actually don't know the representation in here. Um, I just wanna mention that it does have some sort of rep, rep in here, but I don't know what it is yet because I haven't read it yet because I'm waiting on the audiobook to come in through my library. Um, I know I'm taking too long to read it. I should have read it by now, um, but I can't wait to read this one. This is a male male romance, sports romance, I'm pretty sure. Um, I think they're both players on a soccer team, if I'm not mistaken, um, but I'm really looking forward to reading this one. And I know that people have said that the rep in here is amazing. I have another Ruby Dixon. <laughs> I forgot to mention it with the other one I talked about, um, but this is When She Belongs. It's one of my favorite books by Ruby. I adore this book so much. This is another grumpy sunshine. The alien hero is the grump and the heroine human is the sunshine. So this is about Sophie and Jera. You've read about Sophie in the previous book in the series. She was rescued from being a human slave by these three brothers, these three pirate brothers. And so she's on this ship with them and they're like, hey, we're gonna go treasure hunting and we don't want to put you in danger. So we're gonna leave you on this abandoned asteroid with our friend named Jerok. Um, so we can go treasure hunting and when we're done, we'll pick you back up. And she doesn't really have a choice in this because they want to keep her safe. So they go and dump her on this asteroid. And Jerok is not very happy about this. Um, and so this is a grumpy sunshine romance between the two of them, forced proximity, grumpy sunshine, amazingness. I love it. It's a thick book, but it's so worth it. Jirok here is the one with a disability. He is a war veteran, so he has many scars and he's an amputee in many places on his body and he has cybernetic limbs because of it. Um, and he is very self-conscious about it and doesn't think he's worthy of Sophie because of what he's gone through. But man, does Sophie show him how attractive she thinks he is. Once she gets over his grumpiness, of course. Um, but I love this one and think that more people should read it. And the last book I wanna mention is The Mistletoe Motive by Chloe Lise. This is a Christmas romance, but it, it's an amazing book to read at any time, honestly. Jonathan and Gabby work in this bookstore together and he does not like Christmas. He doesn't like it and Gabby loves it. She just wants to frolic and be in love with the Christmas season, especially in the bookstore. But the bookstore that they both really love um, is almost on the brink of bankruptcy. And so they have to work together to save this bookstore. And this was just fantastic. I loved it so much. Go with these is amazing. The representation in here, our heroine Gabby is autistic and Jonathan is um, diabetic, which is the first time I've ever read about a person with diabetes before. And so I loved that representation in here. Anyways, there you have it. Those are some more romance books with disability representation for you. Please let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me any painting related emojis like the paint palette, paintbrush, whatever suits your fancy. But anyways, thank you all so, so much for watching. I'll see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. 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 Wake up.